What's going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a bootleg vinyl haul, showcasing my most recent vinyl bootleg acquisitions that I've got so far in 2021. I figure that now that we are three months into the year, I would keep you guys informed as to what I got in terms of bootlegs, since I tend to keep these records outside of my regular monthly vinyl hauls. And, um... Gosh, already three months in, I have a lot of cool things to show in this haul. And as I show everything, I will also explain where I got these various bootlegs and whatnot. It is about to go deep, so without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest bootleg finds. First up is Pink Floyd, The Danish Trip. Uh, I got this from a Discog seller. Uh, this is an audience recording from the Star Club in Copenhagen, Denmark on September 13th, 1967, which is actually my birthday, but except I was born 30 years later. Um, I have to say the sound quality of this is rather nice for an audience recording. Uh, it's very much in line with the Stockholm show that's featured in the early years box set. Uh, you can make out the band well instrumentally, but you can only make out the vocals so much. But this show is really, really cool because we have a live rendition of Arnold Lane, which doesn't appear quite often in the form of early live recordings. Uh, the track One in a Million, which to the best to my knowledge was never recorded in the studio uh the main riff in the song sounds like it was recycled for a uh, corporal clegg uh and then we have things such as uh scream thy last scream uh matilda mother astronomy domine uh just a great live document from the early sid barrett era uh a very solid release overall it does feature some very cool photos on the sleeve and this pressing comes pressed on sort of milky clear vinyl with some plain white labels next up is a pink floyd grail for me and that is deep space oakland dreaming of sheep uh, i snagged this from roland rex as part of their new year's drops so i basically kicked off 2021 on the highest note possible in terms of vinyl releases uh this is an audience recording from the oakland coliseum in oakland california on may 9th 1977 if you are looking for the single best recording from the animals tour this is it. And the fact that it's an audience recording is astonishing because while it doesn't have the direct sound of a soundboard recording, the person who recorded this show must have been in a sweet spot because the leveling of each member is just spot on and the performance is great. And what is cool about the show is that while the Floyd uh, do animals and Wish You Were Here in their entirety, along with the encore of Money and Us and Them, they also polished off Careful With That Axugene as the final song of the night which was a mainstay in their live set in the early years um i actually ended up selling my copy of memories of boredom and pain which is like a compilation of various recordings from this tour uh to get this because this was not exactly the cheapest release to get my hands on but needless to say it was a must-have for me uh this was put out by a label called the swinging pig and out of 500 numbered copies i have copy number 473 uh this comes in a triple gatefold sleeve sorry for the glare uh where we have some nice bit of artwork and a band photo which is pretty cool and each record uh did come in this sort of die cut printed inner sleeve um this comes with sort of cartoonish artwork which is kind of traditional when it comes to the old school bootlegs which is pretty cool. And this particular variant is pressed on marbled gray vinyl, which really looks very sharp. The next two bootlegs were belated Christmas gifts from my parents, and the first one is a first for me since I didn't have any bootlegs by these guys, and it is the Rolling Stones 69 RS tracks. Now, this mainly consists of various studio outtakes from the Let It Bleed and Sticky Finger sessions. Uh, these recordings were a part of a massive dump that came on New Year's Eve on YouTube uh, under the YouTube channel 69 
and RS tracks. And there were a bunch of studio outtakes, rough live recordings, including recordings from the uh, infamous show at Altamont. And they were quickly taken down simply because they were uploaded to retain the copyrights. Since copyright under uh, European law expires after 50 years. So once they were retained, they basically disappeared. And of course, uh, many people jumped on them and many bootlegs came out of the woodwork such as this one and uh, on this we have some uh, instrumental mixes uh, we have a version of give me shelter with keith richard singing lead a version of you got the silver with mick jagger singing lead and a 20 minute excerpt from the choir session of you can't always get what you want which is just a cool fly on the wall experience to listen to uh, this does come in a nice gatefold sleeve which features some pretty cool photos as well as a uh, track by track breakdown, just kind of talking about what is featured on this. And uh, this particular variant comes pressed on blue vinyl. Next up is David Bowie's Standing On My Own. Uh, this is a collection of various recordings from the period of 1966 to 1970. Uh, we have some demos, studio acetates, tracks from the Love You Till Tuesday film, as well as Period in Turquoise or the Looking Glass Murders films that Bowie starred in, as well as the Ivor Novello Awards. So there's tracks on here such as, you know, Sell Me a Coat, Love You Till Tuesday, In the Heat of the morning and when i live my dream um it's a rather good companion piece uh to the self-titled debut album bowie did when he was signed with duram uh this pressing is limited to 500 copies i have copy number 403 uh the jacket does come with very nice old photos of david and those photos are also featured on the printed inner sleeve here and then uh we also have a brief write-up talking about the release and what entails with the content that is featured and this pressing comes pressed on sort of clear marbled purple vinyl which looks pretty cool now the next three bootlegs were christmas gifts from my wonderful best friend chelsea when she did a bit of a christmas shopping spree for me bless her heart she is the absolute best uh first one up is David Bowie Soul Tour 74. Uh, this is an audience recording mostly taken from the Boston Music Hall in Boston, Massachusetts on November 15th, 1974, along with a few cuts from Detroit, Michigan on October 16th. And before we got the I'm Only Dancing Soul Tour release from Record Store Day 2020, uh, there were only bootlegs that documented Bowie from this later portion of the Diamond Dogs Tour, which was called the Soul Slash philly dogs tour having just recorded young americans and i have to say in terms of bootleg recordings from this tour this is certainly one of the better ones that circulate uh the detroit cuts towards the end are a bit rough sounding but the boston show just appears so clear so this is definitely a bowie bootleg that i do recommend checking out uh the packaging itself is awesome uh, we have Bowie having a private moment with a fan on the backside. And inside, we have a very nice fold-out poster, which would look good on any bedroom wall. And uh, this is a two-LP set, where the first LP comes pressed on sort of marbled green vinyl. And then the second LP comes pressed on sort of marbled red. Next up is Queen South America Bites the Dust. Uh, this is a soundboard recording taken from the band's first ever show in South America at the Jose Amalfitani Stadium in Buenos Aires, Argentina on February 28th, 1981. Uh, this is perhaps Queen at their peak in terms of being a live band. It's just the four of them on stage, the performance is tight, and hearing them on this huge of a scale in a soccer stadium filled with people uh, is just out of this world, and you can sense that excitement in the band's performance. And what is cool about this show is that while it heavily focuses on tracks from the game, uh, we do get some live renditions of some tracks that kind of came and went in the live set from that album, such as Need Your Loving Tonight and Rocket Prime 
jive. And it's also really cool to hear things such as Mustafa, Death on Two Legs, Flash, and the Hero as well. So in terms of the set list, along with the usual staples such as the fast version of We Will Rock You, Let Me Entertain You, Bohemian Rhapsody, Tie Your Mother Down, I would say this bootleg is definitely up there in terms of being one of the best Queen bootlegs. Uh, the cover features a pretty cool live shot of Freddie and Brian. And the back cover features the whole band right there. Uh, this comes on two LPs that are pressed on milky clear vinyl once again. And um, each band member appears on uh, each of the center labels as well. Next up is Queen Rock in Rio. This is, of course, taken from the band's performance at the Rock in Rio Festival on January 11th, 1985. It is a phenomenal soundboard recording. I would go as far as to say that it sounds perfect when it comes to bootleg standards. And I would take a good guess and say that the audio source comes from the Live in Rio VHS tape that came out uh, in the same year in 1985, which is likely because between both the VHS tape and this bootleg, uh, the set list is incomplete and there are some songs that weren't featured, but it is still rather enjoyable just down to the sound quality alone. Uh, the version of Love of My Life on this is just so breathtaking with the entire audience singing along. And it just goes to show how that song fits so well in the context of a Queen live show with audience participation. And considering the scale of this particular festival with there being almost 500,000 people there, it is just absolutely breathtaking. Uh, it comes in a nice standard color sleeve on black vinyl cool shot on the back and what i love in terms of the center labels here is that one side features the um the flag of england which is obvious because that is where queen is from uh the back side has the brazilian flag since that is where rio is located this next bootleg i kind of bought on a whim from a discog seller partly instigated by my dad because I told him that there was a CD version of this particular bootleg that I'm about to show you and his his ears kind of perked and basically with how I am with vinyl is how my dad is with CDs when it comes to bootlegs that's where I get my love for bootlegs from and I basically made him a deal where if he was going to buy the CD, then I would get the vinyl because I was going to wait on it, but I don't like to sleep on these kinds of things because once they disappear, you don't really see them pop up too often. And uh, let's just say I kind of needed that little push and he ended up pulling out his wallet much quicker than I would have. So he bought the CD and that meant that I bought the vinyl. But anyways, I am talking about... Genesis, live in Pittsburgh, 1976. This is a radio broadcast recording taken from the Syrian Mosque in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on April 13th, 1976. Uh, I did not have any live documents from the Genesis Trick of the Tail Tour. So this was a perfect contender and the sound quality is absolutely phenomenal. And at this point, Phil Collins became the vocalist. So for the tour, they brought on Bill Bruford on drums, which is such a Treat. He is certainly one of my favorite drummers after having played with bands such as Yes and King Crimson. Uh, set list wise, it starts with uh, Dance on a Volcano and then it goes into the Lamb Stew medley where they do a whole bunch of stuff from Lamb Lies Down. Uh, we have a great stripped down version of White Mountain from Trespass, which is a real treat. And then, of course, Supper's Ready takes up an entire side. And then uh, it ends with the encore medley of It slash Watcher of the Skies. Uh, just a great great set all around uh this was put out by a label called Vern records they are one of my favorite bootleg labels since they always put out quality shows um it's an awesome cover right there nice photo collage on the back with the track list and the center labels do come with some pretty cool live shots as you can see this is for lp1 and this is for lp2 this next bootleg I got from Roland Rex with a Visa gift card that my parents got me for Christmas, and that is The Beatles Sessions. Now, there is an entire backstory uh, behind this particular release that I must share with you guys to give you guys some context. Now, around the mid to late 70s, the new Beatles products that the public saw uh, were all these compilations such as rock and roll music and love songs, and there were several attempts to bring in some unreleased stuff to the forefront. 
So EMI started to look at some of the unreleased Beatles recordings that resided within the Abbey Road vaults, and uh, house engineer John Barrett unearthed even more recordings as he was going through his cancer treatment at the time, and some of the recordings he found uh, ended up being used uh, at the Beatles at Abbey Road audio exhibit that occurred in 1983. Now, a year later, uh, engineer Jeff Emmerich was summoned by EMI to remix and edit the material that was brought together that was going to be released as an album called Sessions. It had a slated release date around November of 1984, and EMI didn't want it to clash with Paul McCartney's Give My Regards to Broad Street, and the surviving Beatles, uh, along with John Lennon's estate, objected to it, so it got pulled. Now, on this album, we got songs such as Come and Get It, Leave My Kitten Alone, Not Guilty, What's New, Mary Jane, uh, Besame Mucho, If You Got Troubles, That Means A Lot. Uh, some of these songs may seem familiar because roughly 10 years later, we got the three Beatles anthology albums, and all the stuff that was slated to appear on the Sessions album uh, ended up appearing on the anthologies. Now, if you have the anthologies, you don't really need this, but for the sake of having a release that never came out and hearing it the way it was intended is rather historic so that's why i have my hands on a copy um this was put out by a label called discotron and out of 600 numbered copies i have copy number 529 and on the back along with the track list uh, we have a written piece taken from the uh, chicago sun times which talks about the sessions album uh, the article dates back around 1985 and it continues on to the printed inner sleeve. And then on the flip side, um, a along with the band photo, we actually do have some proposed uh, covers that were suggested uh, to be um, chosen as the album cover for Sessions. And this particular release comes pressed on red vinyl. This next bootleg is another one that I got from Roland Rex, and it is ghost live eternal ceremony at wembley uh this is a rather decent audience recording taken from the wembley sse arena in london england on november 22nd 2019 uh this is an entirely revamped show from the prequel album cycle i did see the tour when it came to philly back in the winter of 2018 and it was an evening with type of show where they did two sets with no opening act uh with this part of the tour they brought in two new songs that they had released as a single uh, which were Kiss the Go-Go and Mary on a Cross and just did one set so a lot of stuff was swapped out but the flow is rather strong. The band just merges into one song after the other and it's awesome and the way that Cardinal Copia kind of interacts with the crowd is just good fun and uh, what's funny is before Cerise, uh, the two ghoul guitarists have like this dueling match with each other and um, I guess because they were in London they busted into the theme uh, for Coronation Street, which is a very popular soap opera in the UK. Uh, Queen spoofed the show uh, in their I Want to Break Free music video. So um, it's a nice little nod for the Brits. Uh, this was put out by Casino Records. It is packaged very, very nicely. And out of 350 numbered copies, I have copy number 265. Uh, it does come with an insert, which kind of talks about this particular leg of the tour, along with the tour poster. Uh, there is some artwork for the uh, recently um, kind of, uh, how would you say, knighted uh, Papa Emeritus IV, which will be appearing on the next Ghost album. And uh, we have a nice, cool live collage here. There's a plush cardinal there, which is pretty funny. And uh, this comes pressed, it's a uh, two LP set, comes pressed on sort of smoky clear vinyl, and we have some phenomenal artwork featured on the center labels. Now, the last three bootlegs were ones that I got over at Sky Valley Records, and first up, we have 
The Doors When the Music's Over. This is a collection of recordings taken from The Doors European tour back in 1968. Uh, most of it comes from an appearance that they did for uh, Danish television, where they do things such as Texas Radio and the Big B, Love Me Two Times, Unknown Soldier and such. Then there is Light My Fire from the Roundhouse in London. And then there's kind of like a bonus cut, which is a version of The End from a Canadian TV appearance from 1967. Uh, Considering that there are no official releases that document this tour that the Doors did in Europe, uh, this bootleg certainly serves its purpose and it is quite interesting. Uh, the cover photo that you see here is actually uh, from the Danish TV appearance. And then the back features a photo of Jim, whether he's portraying the dead soldier and the unknown soldier or he actually passed out on stage, which did happen on the tour. We certainly don't know. Uh, this does come on standard black vinyl with rather basic um, black with white text center labels. Next up is David Gilmore, The Complete Sessions. Uh, I don't have any David Gilmore bootlegs in my collection. And I have seen this for a number of years at my local record store. But this time around, I actually got it a little cheaper than what they list it at. So, win-win. Uh, this is a collection of various recordings taken from the On an Island uh, album cycle. Uh, we have performances that were from the Live from Abbey Road series. Uh, some barn jams, which appeared on the Live in Gdansk uh, DVD, uh, the AOL music sessions from New York, as well as some various other bits and pieces. Uh, I would say it's a rather nice companion piece to go alongside on an island, and most of the songs featured on this release do come from that album, and uh, David also polishes off some Pink Floyd tracks such as Astronomy Domini, High Hopes, Comfortably Numb, and a rather interesting acoustic version of Echoes, which is very nice sounding comes in a very nice glossy sleeve and we have a nice photo collage on the gatefold here and i love the little nod to richard wright uh where it says shine on you crazy diamond which i believe when this uh bootleg came out in 2008 he had passed away so it's a nice little tribute to rick uh this particular variant comes pressed on green vinyl and it does come with Quite nice uh, center labels. If you can see, there's David playing on the bottom there with a the spotlight. Very sharp looking. And last but not least is another first for me. And when it comes to this band, there are tons of bootlegs out there. And it's quite intimidating in terms of where you would want to start first. And I figured with this particular release, this is the easiest route to go down. And I could just kind of build it from there. Nirvana, Almost Everything, the BBC Sessions. Now, I don't think that this is necessarily complete, but it does bring together most of Nirvana's BBC uh, Sessions. Uh, there's things such as Polly, Spang Through, uh, Molly's Lips, uh, which I believe appeared on the Incesticide compilation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Drain You, Love Buzz, About a Girl, uh, Dumb. Uh, just, this is an absolutely solid collection. And after spinning this, uh, I definitely do want to build my Nirvana bootleg collection. And I figured I kind of got that kickstarted with the right possible release. Um, uh, what I love about this particular release is that it's like a screen printed cover. This comes in like a standard kind of cardboard sleeve and they kind of screen printed the track list and the artwork, which that right there is absolutely gnarly. Like if that was on a t-shirt, I would gladly wear that. It just looks so sick. And this just comes on standard black vinyl with basic black labels, as you can see there. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl bootleg haul of all the bootlegs that I have acquired so far in 2021. Now I can confirm that there is going to be another vinyl bootleg haul coming to the channel in roughly three months or so. Uh, but that time around, it will be all about this band here. Let this serve as a hint of what is to come. And it is going to get hotter than hell. No pun intended. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel and if you want to support this channel be sure to check me out on patreon see you guys in the next video and most importantly keep the record spinning